Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about acid blockers and why acid blockers are potentially harmful to your thyroid. Not directly to your thyroid, but they can cause problems if you have a thyroid condition, especially if you are taking thyroid medication. So let's jump into this because there are a lot of thyroid patients who take acid blockers for reasons we'll talk about in just a minute here. So what are acid blockers? Put simply, all these things are, they are medications which block in various ways how much acid is actually being produced and or secreted inside of your stomach. Right? Why would you want to do this? Well, it's usually used to treat certain medical conditions. One of the most common would be acid reflux, but they're also used to treat things like H. pylori, ulcers, GI bleeds, and some other gastrointestinal issues. Now, most people take them though for acid reflux because the idea goes something like this. If you have acid reflux, it's obviously, at least I'm speaking from the perspective of your doctor, it's obviously a problem with your stomach that's producing too much acid. That acid is getting refluxed in, kind of like gurgling up inside of your esophagus. And over time, it can cause damage and chronic inflammation, which may lead or increase your risk of developing cancer. So the bright idea here is let's reduce the amount of stomach acid that's there, even though we're not going to stop the refluxing. And then that way you won't have, you won't, it won't increase your risk of cancer down the line, right? Well, it may not, it may actually solve the problem of the cancer. However, it causes a lot of other problems downstream because these medications were never intended to be used for longer than uh, two weeks at any given time. In fact, if you look on the back of the uh, prescription uh, that you can buy, because these are available over the counter, by the way, if you just look at the back of the box, it'll say, do not use for longer than two weeks. And yet we have people who are taking them for decades and decades and decades. And now we have more studies which are showing that this can be harmful because it turns out your body needs stomach acid. It needs acid to break down nutrients, to digest food, to um, absorb various things, including thyroid medication and other medications and so on. So you can imagine by blocking that acid, you may solve one problem, but you're causing 10 others down stream. So how do you know if you are taking an acid blocker? Let me briefly go over a couple of the names here. There are two main categories of acid blockers. One are H2 blockers and the other are PPIs or proton pump inhibitors. So all I need you to do is go, go out. If you're not sure if you're taking one of these, just look on the back of the, the box, whatever you're taking. I mean, it's probably one of these. It doesn't really matter because they both have the same effect, but check and see if you're taking any of these. So in the H2 family, we have Zantac, Pepsid, Tagamet, and Fluxid. And in the proton pump inhibitor family, we have Dexalant, Nexium, Prevacid, Prilosex, and Protonix. Now, all PPIs end, all in, end in Prazole, P-R-A-Z-O-L-E. So if you're not, so the medications I listed here, you may not be taking one of those, but if it ends in Prazole, P-R-A-Z-O-L-E, then you are taking a proton pump inhibitor and you are having all the consequences potentially that we're gonna be talking about today. So why are they potentially harmful for your thyroid? Now, all of this pretty much stems from their ability to reduce stomach acid. Because as I mentioned previously, your body, it turns out your body needs that stomach acid for other purposes. Now, in the case of thyroid, uh, in the case of people who have thyroid problems, it's particularly harmful because it has the potential to reduce thyroid hormone absorption. So what I'm talking about is if you take a proton pump inhibitor, and by the way, it lasts a long time. So if you're taking, it doesn't matter when you take it in relation to your thyroid medication. If you are taking a PPI or an H2 blocker or another acid blocker, and you are taking level thyroxine or synthroid, it will impact how much of that level thyroxine or synthroid is actually being absorbed in your body. Okay, it doesn't matter if they're taking 20 hours apart or four hours apart or whatever, right? It doesn't matter because you're taking both even uh, simultaneously at the same time, right? So if you're taking either of them at the same time, it's going to cause this problem. There's this negative effect. Now, what happens is you actually need that stomach acid to absorb that level of thyroxine. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that level of thyroxine is a pretty tenuous sub, a pretty tenuous medication. It looks for any reason to not be absorbed. So reducing stomach acid, just another reason that it won't get absorbed. If it doesn't get absorbed, your TSH will go up, you'll become more hypothyroid and you'll look worse, you're, you'll feel worse, right? Because your symptoms are gonna be worse. In addition to that, it also causes decreased absorption of certain nutrients, including magnesium and B12, both of which are really important for energy production inside of the body. Another one that it causes a deficiency of is iron. And I just did a video on this that I'd recommend you look at, but I talked about why iron is required for thyroid hormone creation. If you don't have enough iron, you're not able to actually produce or create thyroid hormone inside of your thyroid gland. So iron is very important for that purpose. So you can get deficiencies in magnesium, iron, B12, calcium, and a couple of others. And in fact, it, it limits the absorption of many different minerals inside of the body. In addition, it also increases your risk of something called intestinal dysbiosis, as well as something called small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And these are both just long names to describe an imbalance of the gut bacteria inside of your intestinal tract, okay? And when these bacteria get out of line or they have different varying degrees of, of healthy types of bacteria relative to unhealthy or potentially pathogenic bacteria, it can result in inflammation. And that inflammation may reduce how well your thyroid is able to convert inside of your body. So it may indirectly impact thyroid conversion. Lastly, 
uh, proton pump inhibitors may increase your risk of developing food sensitivities. And since thyroid patients, as you, as you know, I've had videos on this as well, there's already a limited number of foods that they can consume, so increasing the, your risk of developing food sensitivities to the little foods that you have left is not a good idea. Okay, so what are you supposed to do if you're taking an acid blocker and you are a thyroid patient? What are you supposed to do? Because I've said stuff like this before, you should avoid these things. And people say, well, I can't. I, like, how, can I, how can I solve my problem if I can't take my acid blocker? Here are a couple ways to look at this. So first of all, by taking the acid blocker, you're not solving the problem. You're just masking up the problem. A better way to, would be to assess what, what triggers the acid reflux to begin with. And in many cases, in many thyroid patients, that includes one of many of these areas that I'm gonna talk about, one or many of them, okay? So food sensitivities is a big one, including dairy, I would say is up there. Gluten is up there as well. So certain food uh, categories can actually trigger acid reflux. Next up there would be an imbalance of gut bacteria. So you already may at baseline, because you have a thyroid condition, have an imbalance of the gut bacteria inside of your intestinal tract, which may precipitate the acid reflux, okay? Now, the acid, taking the proton pump inhibitor or the acid blockers can cause the imbalance as well, but you might have had the imbalance first because of how thyroid impacts your gut. Next, it might also be the case that you had low stomach acid, not excessively high stomach acid. So the symptoms of low stomach acid can mimic those of high stomach acid. And by taking the proton pump inhibitor or any other acid blocker, it's just making the problem worse. It's, just, it's not making it any better because that wasn't your problem to begin with. Because the way that thyroid hormone works is it is required to produce stomach acid. So if your thyroid is low to begin with, you may not be producing enough, which causes gut bacteria, which causes the reflux, which causes the pain, which causes you to take the acid, reflux, or the acid blocker, and then you have a whole cascade of problems, okay? Then lastly, you might uh, find benefit by improving gut motility by increasing your thyroid. So if you can improve thyroid function, you can actually improve how quickly things are moving through your intestinal tract. And if food and digested products and juices aren't staying in your stomach that long, then it reduces the chance that they'll get refluxed up into your esophagus and cause the pain. Now between all these, oh, and I forgot to mention one other thing. You might find benefit um, counterintuitively by taking enzymes or other acid, okay? So by taking enzymes and other acids, it can help digest your food, which can solve some of these imbalances and actually treat um, acid reflux. So I know it sounds counterintuitive, but it is one of the potential treatments for this condition. So there are many different ways to address it, but the idea is to get off of the acid blockers um, in any way possible and to not stay on them for long-term because they negatively impact your thyroid in the ways we've talked about here. So that's all I have on this topic today. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those questions. And if you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information just like this, all designed to help thyroid patients like you. So make sure you download those, download those if you haven't already. So that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one.